if you repeatedly throw a die, three, five, four, four, two, the result does not depend on the previous throw. Each roll is independent. The possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, are constrained by the number of sides on the die. A die, a cube, has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Biological evolution is not like this. We inherit the details of the past from our ancestors. Each roll of our biological die depends on previous rolls. Each generation depends on previous generations. And the number of sides of the biological die is more than six. A cube has six sides. The number of sides of the biological die may be infinite. We cannot count them. Maybe the number of sides of the biological die depends on the previous roll. Thank you. Let's do a thought experiment. What would happen if you could go back in time and let evolution happen again? So here's four billion year evolution of life on Earth. And here's today and here is 65 million years ago, and here's 251 million years ago, and here's 541 million years ago, and on and on, spiraling down 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4, I'm sorry, billion, <laughs> 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion years ago. So that's the spiral of life. Now, let's rewind. Let's rewind to 65 million years ago, and that was when just before the extinction of the dinosaurs. And then what would happen if we let it play forward again? How would life evolve? Or let's go back 251 million years ago, just before the Permian extinction of the trilobites. And then let's let it go forward and see what would happen then. Or even further, let's go back to the Cambrian explosion, or even further, the Precambrian, somewhere between 4 and 0.541 billion years ago. Now, Stuart Kaufman, in this 1985 article, wrote, one way to underline our current ignorance is to ask, if evolution were to recur from the Precambrian when early eukaryotic cells had already been formed, what organisms in one or two billion years might be like? And if the experiment were repeated myriads of time, what properties of organisms would arise repeatedly what properties would be rare, which properties were easy for evolution to happen upon, and which were hard. These reruns would be sometimes called, uh, Dawkins calls them Kaufman reruns. Now, Dawkins said, my bet is that the most uh, rerun thought experiments that start with the origin of life will not make it into the eukaryocracy. They wouldn't be eukaryotes. So the eukaryotes, where are they? They're down here. Here's Luca, bacteria, archaea, and here are the eukaryotes. That's us. Now, start again, but, but from when and from where? We could go back 3.8 billion years to a different Big Bang, to a different universe with different amounts of antimatter. We could start in a different galaxy or in a different position in our galaxy or in a different time in our 12 billion year old galaxy. We could go back to the formation of the Earth 4.5 billion years ago. We could go back to the origin of life about 4 billion years ago. Or we could just go back to the divergence from chimp lineage seven, about 7 million years ago. In any case, here's that picture, and we're trying to rewind from different points of view. James Lovelock, he thought about the origin of life, and he said, wherever life exists, its biochemical form will be strongly determined by the initiating event. Its biochemical form, in other words, what life is, depends on how it got started. That's what James Lovelock is claiming. So that means if we have an Earth the first run, an Earth the second run, if we have different initiating events, then we have different biological, biochemical forms. 
Similarly, if we have Earth over here and we have an Earth-like planet somewhere in the universe, they have different initiating events, you will have different biochemical forms. How different can the biochemical forms be? Well, although the laws of physics and chemistry are universal, the biochemical forms of life may not be, or probably aren't. For example, stars have different sizes and lifetimes and elemental abundances. Rocky, Earth-like planets have different distances from their host stars, different sizes, different atmospheres, different compositions, different surface chemistries, that's important, different amounts of water, different bombardment histories, day lengths, tidal amplitudes, tilts of their spin axes that cause the season, and different eccentricities of their orbits. All these differences affect the chemistry and protobiological molecular evolution at the origin of life. But if life can only get started under very specific conditions, these differences don't matter at all. The problem is, we don't know how specific these conditions need to be for the origin of life. 95 million years ago, humans and dogs had a common ancestor. From this common ancestor, our lineages diverged, producing two increasingly different quirky evolutionary paths in which each step depended on the preceding step of our ancestors, our predators, and our prey. Rewind the clock, not by 95 million years, but by 4 billion years, to the first origins of life. If we did this, we could get a very different biochemistry than the one shared by all life today. A Jesuit motto refers to the importance of beginnings. Give me the child for the first seven years, and I will give you the man. A Jesuit astrobiological motto would be, Give me the protobiochemistry for the first seven million years, and I will give you the life.